the Prime Minister is signaling there could be some movement on a years-old border issue this week. Canada and the U.S. are part of what's called the Safe Third Country Agreement, which means that if you are coming to Canada to seek asylum from the U.S., you'll be turned back if you come to an official border entry point. But there is a loophole to that agreement. If you're in between official points, you can walk over and seek asylum here. Nearly 40,000 people did that at the border crossing at Roxham Road in Quebec last year. Immigration Minister Sean Fraser is here to talk about what could happen this week. Hi, Minister. Good to see you. It's a pleasure to be here in person. I Thanks, appreciate Sasha. you making the time. I know you also have an announcement that a lot of uh, Ukrainians who are here in Canada will want to know about. I'm going to get to that in a second. But I do want to start on this big meeting and, and, and certainly this issue with the Safe Third Country Agreement. We just spoke with Ambassador Hillman, who says she has the sense that the U.S. is listening. I know you just came from Washington. What exactly are you asking them? Uh, we're seeking to uh, strengthen the Safe Third Country Agreement that's going to provide a solution uh, for the communities that have been very seriously impacted. The situation that transpired uh, most recently in Quebec was uh, seeing communities unable to keep up with the volume of people who were arriving in an irregular way. This was manifesting itself in a way where uh, the equivalent of 200 classrooms had been opened just for the children of asylum seekers. It was a new classroom every day. Uh, people were not having capacity to keep a roof over their head or to be treated with dignity. Uh, we've been working to help move people to communities across Canada where they can receive the very basics. But ultimately, we want to promote uh, control at the border with open doors through legal pathways that provide an opportunity for some of the world's most vulnerable to come to Canada safely. So in layman's terms, when you say strengthen, or in the past you and your government have said modernize the safe third country agreement, I'm still not clear on what that means. What could change in that agreement that would prevent people from walking by foot in between pe official points of entry? Um, look, there's a number of different aspects uh, that, that you could consider, and I hesitate to get into some of the specifics that were discussed in confidence with our counterparts in the United States. But in addition to the uh, portion of the agreement that you signaled uh, changing uh, between points of entry, the, the rules that would apply in the same way, the other options that, and uh, steps that would be required uh, include uh, having the capacity to actually enforce whatever changes could be made. Uh, Canada and the United States obviously has a, a very lengthy and, and uh, 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 on a demilitarized border, which is a wonderful thing, uh, but it also uh, creates certain challenges when it comes to monitoring people who might cross in an irregular way. Uh, and by the way, it's not just a Roxham Road issue. You've seen previously in Emerson, Manitoba, and elsewhere across Canada, people who've crossed. Uh, to a much, uh, like oh, a, a much less, like the, the volume is much less. Certainly, in, in, in part, uh, uh, the ability for people to cross and, and uh, be uh, put through a, a system that we had to develop to monitor monitor the volumes, uh, certainly made it uh, easier to facilitate the uh, proper processing of people's asylum claims at Roxham Road. Uh, but that's obviously where the bulk have come. Nearly 40,000 last year in Quebec alone, I think, uh, speaks volumes to the scale that uh, Quebec has been facing. So when you talk about monitoring them, are, are, are you entertaining a, a world in which they would, no matter where they cross over, be turned back to the United States? Uh, well, look, some of these are, uh, things are the, uh, the, the issues that are under discussion with the United States. What we're trying to promote is for people who have the ability to make an asylum claim, uh, we want to encourage them to do so in the first country that they are in fact safe. We don't want to create an uh, incentive for people to make an extremely dangerous journey for themselves and their families. The risks that they're putting themselves in, uh, not just to flee uh, a certain <laughs> desperate situation to uh, pursue uncertainty, uh, but to the extent that people can still escape the violence, war, or persecution they may be fleeing and receive refuge in the first country where they're safe to do so, whether that's Canada, the United States, or another country along their journey, we want to encourage them to make their asylum claim where but they're that first That is safe. a safe third country agreement. That is, in essence, what it stipulates, right? That, that you seek asylum in the country that you originate if one of those two countries is Canada or the U.S., but that's not happening. Well, one of the things that I think is really important is certainly there's an issue between Canada and the U.S., but let's not pretend this is squarely a bilateral issue between our two countries. Uh, there are many countries in the world that have seen massive increases in the number of people who are migrating irregularly to flee very desperate situations. Part of the solution uh, it has to involve capacity building in other countries around the world. Part of the solution has to be addressing irregular migration at, at the root cause by uh, helping grow the capacity of NGOs to provide support for people in other parts of the world. But that's not an immediate fix. And I'm not trying to dis, you know, diminish the importance of all of that in addressing the root causes or in any way kind of discount the very real problems and horrific experiences that people who are willing to do mm -hmm. this have. But that's not, at this point, if you, if, if you start building capacity in other countries, that's not going to address what's happening at Roxham Road right now. 
Um, certainly, in the immediacy. Look, there is, there is no immediate solve to irregular migration. Certainly addressing the situation at the Canada-U.S. border is part of the solution. Capacity building in the long term is part of the solution. Creating legal pathways for people to come to Canada in larger numbers is going to have to be part of the solution in the years ahead. Uh, the reality is there's not a silver bullet here. This is a problem that will persist globally for many years. Advancing solutions that will allow us to uh, strengthen controls at the border but adopt more compassionate policies for the world's vulnerable has to be the approach. But this is not a one-time fix that we can uh, achieve through uh, modifying one particular law or agreement. It's going to require constant attention to make sure that we're protecting the world's vulnerable but also promoting a regular uh, uh, series of migration policies. And, and just to be clear, though, are, am I to take from that that your government's objective is not to amend the agreement? Uh, no, we, we were, uh, we've been very public in our last campaign platform and in our public commentary since uh, that we are uh, pursuing a uh, modernized or strengthened agreement. The precise details that we're pursuing, I, I'm afraid I'll have to uh, maintain the confidence of the conversations I've had with my counterpart in the United States. Uh, but as we work towards a modernized agreement, uh, of course, uh, when the time comes, we'd be, uh, we'll be sharing that. Publicly. Is there anything other than goodwill? that's going to prompt the U.S. to come to an agreement, to change this agreement. Ambassador Cohen seemed to signal that, that they didn't feel like it would do much. Uh, well, look, my, my view is that we do need to address the situation at the Canada-U.S. border, but he's right to point out that this is a much broader issue. And the conversation I had with Secretary Mayorkas during my recent trip to D.C. and the conversation I had with him since both involved uh, a wider array of policy areas that touch on the issues of irregular migration. Did he tell you he's willing to change the Safe Third Country Agreement? I know, I know you're not going to get specific, but is he said, has he said to you unequivocally, the U.S., the White House, is willing to, to make those changes. Uh, I'm very encouraged that the United States is going to be a willing partner as we pursue a strengthened safe third country agreement. Uh, but I know that that's because they care about this issue. Uh, the United States takes border management very seriously. They had 2.3 million people cross irregularly across the southwest border of the U.S. and Mexico last year. They want to continue to build capacity in the Americas so people have an opportunity to stay and succeed in their home country and to build capacity in neighboring countries to process people to make asylum claims in South and Central America. Um, we do have a strong partner with the United States. I was very encouraged by the nature of the conversation I had with Secretary Mayorkas, and we're going to continue to work together. But my sense is that they do have the political will, not just to deal with the Canada-U.S. border situation, but to uh, include Canada and the solution to the broader challenge that we're facing with the regular migration in the Americas. Okay, I'm running out of time, very little time, so I do want to make sure that we get into your announcement today. As I said, a lot of Ukrainians are probably very interested to find out that one of the two kind of emergency programs set up for them now has an extended deadline. Can you, can you clarify exactly um, why you wanted to extend it and what it means for people who would like to seek refuge here? Uh, first of all, I think it's essential that Canada continues to support vulnerable Ukrainians who are fleeing this uh, war of aggression by Vladimir Putin. Uh, this is uh, something that we made a commitment to more than a year ago. And as the situation on the ground continues to demonstrate the need for people to potentially flee, we wanted to extend the ability for people to apply for this special humanitarian temporary visa that we created in response to the situation. We've extended the application deadline from March 31st this year to July 15th. But more importantly, we've communicated that we're extending the deadline to arrive in Canada right. until the end of March next year, where people can arrive and still receive the benefits, including uh, short-term income support, temporary housing, and settlement services, so people don't just get here, but are set up for success after they arrive. We've seen a statement from the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress since the announcement who welcomed this news, uh, but uh, I can tell you, speaking to people in the community, including people who've stayed with my parents, uh, that um, the program is most welcome, and to see the world step up and recognize this is just not a European problem, just not a Ukrainian problem, uh, but the values that can Canadians val uh, cherish, uh, including self-determination, territorial integrity, and sovereignty of nations, uh, demand not just kind words, but concrete actions. And by extending these pathways for vulnerable Ukrainians, I think we're demonstrating that we're in this for the long run and willing to support the world's most vulnerable. Okay, Minister, I'll leave it there. I am out of time. Thank you very much for your time. A pleasure as always. Thank Immigration you. Minister Sean Fraser.